There's a tool called ChatGPT that's kind of breaking the internet with all the news about it right now. If you haven't heard, it's basically a chatbot with a really complex language model that looks more human than any other chatbot we've seen before. And more than just a chatbot that you can send silly messages to, it can actually help you think. At least that's sort of how I'm putting it to the people who ask me what I think about the potential for ChatGPT is to impact UX design as a field. And I think the best way to show you why this is going to be so important for the way we write, the way we summarize user research, the way we think and get opinions is to show you. So I have the website up here. It's made by OpenAI and you can actually create an account yourself for free. If I move my face, you'll see here, try chat GPT uh, and it'll let you do that for free. And so uh, I'm going to log into my account over here. And for this first video, I want to show you how ChatGPT can impact the end of the user research process. So in this particular case, we've gone out and learned a whole bunch about the users for the business we're hired by right now, which is a company that aims to help busy parents make healthy meals for their kids. And so I went out, interviewed 24 people, you know, 12 dads, 12 moms. And now I'm at the point where I need to summarize the information and build a user persona. And so typically I would have to sit there and kind of synthesize all this information, but I kind of have the bullet points in my head of what are the most important things. And so I can come to chat GPT and be like, generate a user persona about a busy mom who lives in the city that wants to make sure her kids eat healthy without compromising time away from her hobbies and career. So very simplistic for now, but this is sort of the gist of what I learned from my user research. Of course, there's more details than that, but we're just talking about the general user persona for now, not the specific details that we're going to use to build other things. So I can come to this chat GPT and hit enter and start a chat thread with this bot. And now it'll build me a full user persona with the actual bullet points and the summary. So we have the name, age, occupation, location. Uh, we have the summary and It'll start giving me this paragraph, which is pretty cool. All right. Okay, we'll give it a moment here. I love watching this thing, right? It's so cool. It's like watching someone on a Google Doc, uh, but a person who never gets tired and writes at the same word speed per minute. Um, all right. Let's see now. Awesome. So we can read through this. And what's cool is we don't have to live with what it gives us, right? This is an actual chat, as if you're talking with someone who can understand the meaning behind the language that they've written. So despite your busy schedule, she's always on the lookout for quick and easy meal ideas in her free time, practicing yoga, researching ways to make meal prep more efficient. But in my case, this doesn't make sense because what I meant by my prompt is that she doesn't actually like cooking so much. So I can say... Um, rewrite it, but this time, Samantha doesn't like cooking. And this is where things get really interesting. So now it's going to start writing again. Despite her busy schedule, makes it a priority to ensure her kids eat healthy and well, but she doesn't like to cook. And so what's going to happen is you'll see that throughout the paragraph, but cooking is not one of them, right? Without spending too much time in the kitchen, frequently uses her phone and tablet, search for meal delivery services. Perfect. Now we're really touching on what I intended with my original message. I could have maybe put those in the original prompt, but that's what's beautiful about having a language model. Thinking isn't always perfect on the first try, right? Like in the creative process, you're going to put something out there uh, and then once you look at it, you'll actually know how you can massage it and reshape it into the right thing. And so now this is looking really cool, but because it's a natural language model, 
that's very complex and has billions of different data points, I can actually say, write this in the format of a user persona, because now I've gotten it right. So we're going to do that. And so now, to take a moment to dig through its massive array of data, especially considering how busy the servers are. People are using this thing all the time. And now, it'll put it in the actual format with the demographics. And this is crazy. <laughs> I mean, this video is now like five minutes and some seconds long. And I've done more work than I ever could have writing it on my own. Um, and again, this is just a starting template, right? I can just like take this out of here and modify it. But this is really, really powerful stuff. So uh, once it's done, we're kind of done this process now. And I can go back, find my images, put all this information in the template I have prepared in my Google slide or whatever it is. And... Sometimes it'll get a bit confused. So in this particular case, it started like writing the paragraph, which I don't need, but it gave me all this stuff already, which is perfect. And I can just ignore this last paragraph here. What's really cool about this is you don't have to stop at simple asks like this. Every time you go back to this chat, you can keep in mind that it remembers what it's told you already. And so I can do things like, now write me, an email to my colleague with uh, a three bullet point summary of this persona and ask them for their feedback and we'll see what it does. So it gives me a subject. <laughs> All right. And hopefully it can count correctly. It can. Nice. And that's it. I can copy and paste this email and send it over to a colleague and then copy and paste the demographic persona here that I have into my Figma or Google Slides and start tweaking it if I need to. And I have a nice paragraph if I need to share that with anyone that is asking for some more detail or depth. And that's how ChatGPT is going to impact the writing of user personas and the synthesis of user research. So I'm going to keep poking and prodding at this ChatGPT thing to see how else it can kind of impact the, the work that we're doing as UX designers. But I thought this was an interesting start. This is by no means perfect. And there are many disclaimers around, you know, paying close attention to the t details it's giving you to make sure it's actually representative of uh, the research that you've done. But I think overall, this is a huge, huge you know, benefits for people who find writing difficult, who are busy, maybe you're a freelancer or you're working alone in a small company and don't have time uh, to put in so much emphasis on the different cycles of your work. So this way you can have a colleague with you for free for now uh, that will help you with simple tasks like synthesizing information uh, and especially tasks that are focused on language. Let me know what you think and I'll keep sharing videos as I dig through this uh, and learn more and hopefully help you guys with your journey and learning more about the impact of AI in UX. Cheers.